And welcome back to another daily devotion. I am Pastor Roy here at Woodlawn Christian Church in Lake City, Iowa, and this devotion is for Monday, January 8th of 2024. We are in the Gospel of Mark, and we're in the fourth chapter. Uh, today we want to look at verses 26 to 29, just a short little snippet today, and just a short little parable. It's the parable of the growing seed, not one that you're probably particularly familiar with. It's not one we talk about a lot because it's only in Mark's Gospel. It's very short. It kind of just sneaks its way in here. We kind of go to the parable of the mustard seed, which we'll talk about tomorrow, uh, and we go to the sower and the lamp under the bushel basket, and we kind of just skip over this one because kind of for a reason. It's probably maybe not the most clear parable. It's only in Mark's Gospel. Matthew and Luke decided not to include it for whatever reason. It's also, it's partly because Mark is, you know, that, that foot on the accelerator thing, that immediately, immediately, or in this translation, of the, the Revised Standard Version calls it at once, they translated in this instance rather than immediately. Um, Mark likes to just kind of speed along. I see this mis, misinterpreted, to be quite honest, quite a bit. Um, I see pastors bring Satan and demons and all kinds of crazy stuff into this. I don't know how in the world they're coming up with those ideas because it's just not there. There is no mention of good or evil in this parable. So what in the world are you doing bringing that into it? Um, <clears throat> I do think that it's important to remember the parable of the sower that we talked about a few days ago. These are both agrarian uh, parables. Uh, they're both about farming. Uh, they're both about sowing seed. And so there is a carryover there. So I think that in order to understand this one, we do have to remember that parable of the sower. And remember, there he's scattering seed. He's not judging the ground that he's scattering on. We talked about that. We actually used two days to, to talk about the sower. It's an important parable. Um, and so we don't judge the ground that we're scattering our seed upon. We, 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 we do it indiscriminately because we're not to decide whether this is hard-packed soil or whether this is rocky soil, whether this is thistly soil, or this is good soil. God will take care of that. And that's kind of part of what's going on here, I think, as well. Um, we have to be careful. It, it's very possible to translate this or to interpret this, rather, as a deist God. And we'll talk about that after we read it. I don't believe that this is a message that would support uh, deism, which is the, the idea that God is a, the great cosmic clockmaker that makes the clock and winds it up and walks away and just lets the clock run and doesn't ever, in, doesn't ever uh, come into um, the world again. He just lets the world go. And that, that I don't think is good theology. But let's read the chapter or the uh, parable and then we'll talk about it some more, shall we? So, Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 26 to 29. And he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed upon the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should sprout and grow, he knows not how. The earth produces of itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. Okay. Don't believe this is a, a, a deist because it, what it says here, the kingdom of God is as if a man, not as if God. And remember in the parable of the sower, the sower is he, us, not God. The, the, the seed is the, is the, the gospel that's the, that is teaching about God. That is God's truth. And so here the seed again is our spiritual growth. It's about growing in our faith. It's about our growing in our knowledge of Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, you know, the substitutional sacrifice that came into the world to get us right with God because we couldn't do it ourselves and we can't do it ourselves. We just can't get there. So we need Jesus to reconcile us. That's the seed. It's the, it's the gospel in a nutshell. Um, we, and it also says here, uh, he knows not how the, 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 is grow, the seed is growing. Well, God knows how the seed grows. God knows how everything goes. God is God. He understands everything. So therefore, this is not, a, this is not deism, God. It's not, the man is not God. Long story short, it's us. But we are called to spread the word of God. We're called to, to teach, to preach, to, to, to expose people. Um, to witness is what I'm trying to say. I uh, couldn't think of that big word today, witness. Don't do that. Uh, do do that, brother. Um, but at any rate, we are called to witness, but we don't know exactly how this, that, that, that seed, that spirituality, that spiritual message, we give it to folks. We don't quite understand 
how and why and where it does and doesn't take root, do we? Because sometimes some there's people sometimes that we think are going to be really great Christians, and boom, we we they disappear. We never see them again for whatever reason. But they may move somewhere else, and somebody else might help water and and support that seed, and eventually they will come to harvest. All things will come in their due time, and that's what this is teaching us. That that eventually. The fruition will come. The grain will become to come to be ripe at some point, and then the harvest comes. So it's about spiritual growth, and it's not. There's, there's this is not the parable of the wheat and the tares. So we don't have a mention of you know people. Perhaps that's where ministers get in trouble. They bring they kind of conflate those those parables. This is not the parable of the wheat and the tares. There's no mention of that of of, of, of weeds and thistles and thorns about this. It's just talking about spiritual growth. It's not even looking at the other side uh, of, of what may or may not get in our way. We know things do from the parable of the sower and from our own lives. We just know that. And from the parable of the wheat and the tares. But here, it's not bringing in, in, in those aspects of this demonic or anything like that. And it's not deism. It, it, it's just those things. If you hear somebody saying those things, take it from Pastor Roy. That's not what what it's doing. It's talking about our spiritual growth. We don't really understand how our own spiritual growth works. We can work on it and we do these, you know, where spiritual growth doesn't do this, does it? It kind of does this. Hopefully it's slowly moving up all the time, um, but sometimes we, we're, we're like that plant that doesn't quite get enough rain and it kind of goes dormant for a while. You've, had, you've seen that if you're a gardener uh, or you're, if you have plants in your yard, they'll kind of stop or they might even wither back a little bit they might and then, and then when we get the rain or you or you, you you know spurge a little bit and you water your garden which i watered my garden plenty because i you know but we, we depend upon it for for produce but whatever um back to the topic at hand sometimes they have to just sit and wait and that's the way people are too sometimes that's the way we are at times we we, we you know, if you if you're really honest with yourself and reflect on your own life um, I think you'll see that there's been times in your life you've been like that. So we're very much like a living plant. That's a long story short. Um, but let us work towards helping others to become ripe so that they, you know, the harvest is, you know, the harvest is coming, folks, at some point. Jesus is going to come into the world again. We know that. Um, but again, don't try to read demons into this. I'm not sure where you're going to get that. Um, and don't try to paint God as being some disinterested God. He's very interested in you. We have plenty of other places that tell us that. That's enough for today. This has gone on much longer than I thought it would for this short little parable. Please have a blessed day, and please, please, please be a blessing to someone today. If you like these devotions, if they do anything for you, please like and subscribe. Come on back again. We'd love to see you. But remember, most of all, not to be a blessing to someone today, and that God loves you. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.